So welcome to another one of our surface, and after, surface anatomy videos. Um, today I want to really think about the relationship between the pelvic floor and the diaphragm. Now there's a lot written about this in terms of pelvic floor as, uh, assessment and pelvic floor uh, strengthening. You know, Pilates being probably our, one of our most well-known uh, schools of thinking. Um, but what I want to share, a couple of things, techniques that I get my clients to do. Um, the first thing is to think about the pelvic floor and the diaphragm need to sit straight over each other. So if you have a situation where the pelvic floor is maybe tilted, or the diaphragm is slightly forward or back because of people's posture, or there's a rotation in the relationship between the diaphragm and uh, the pelvic floor, this upsets that whole relationship of the, of the girdle, if you like, or the bowl that sits around our, 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 our pelvis. So the pelvis sits, we've got these lower back muscles that we know about, rectus spinae, we know the pelvic floor muscles, and then we've got this abdominal muscle group, uh, our abs, and the, and the whole story of all these muscles sitting together, including the diaphragm, gives us stability. And if we keep that stability reasonably well, then we avoid uh, low back pain, um, tight hip flexors, we end up in a place where we've got stability. So if I transfer that into a little bit of an exercise that I get people to do, to think about very slow, very kind of delicate work to start to engage and get mobility and uh, stability in the, in the core. So James joined us. He's, so here's his kind of ASI, so you know, the front of the pelvis. And what I want him to do is to slowly kind of gather up and tilt his lower pelvis anteriorly and then posteriorly. But the movement is quite slow. And often what I do is I get people to put their fingers just inside their ASI, so it's anterior superior iliac spines. They can sit just inside and come up a little bit. And then you're into some of your deep abdominal muscle groups there on both sides. And then if you get people just to slowly engage their tummy and then begin to rotate and lift their coccyx off the couch. So they're rolling forward and then rolling backwards. So keep your bottom on the couch, but tilt backwards and forwards. So come forward, yeah, and then tilt the other way. When I learned this, somebody described about having a torch duct taped to your coccyx. And when you rotated your pelvis, you saw the torch gradually going up the wall <laughs> and down again. So it, it offers, a, and what we're looking for really is control. And if you watch how people do this, you can see that their movements can be a bit jerky. And what you're looking for is gradual strength, stability in being able to make these moves with control. So you've got that rotation both, both ways, two or three times. Uh, another one I quite like doing, which engages the adult, uh, adductors and the adductors, so the, the glutes and the adductive muscles, is have a, ask people to just let their knee come out really slowly. So the other leg is stable, they bring their knee out really slowly, and the moment they can see jerkiness in their movement, then you know the eccentric and the concentric balance of muscle movement isn't balanced. And this starts that journey of beginning to get our pelvis stable, working together uh, with our diaphragm. Now there's a whole load of stuff that can get in around this, and I'm just scratching the surface. But I wanted to sort of just begin to get people to think about, let's have a look at where the diaphragm is, let's have a look at where the pelvic floor is with our posture assessment, and then start thinking, is there a rotation, is there a flexion, is there a low, low dosis, etc., 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 and starts to get this um, homeostasis around our, our, our low body, pelvic floor and diaphragm. Thanks.